Walter Benjamin, The Work of Art in the Age of Its Technological Reproducibility, Third Version. Our fine arts were developed, their types and uses were established in times very different from the present by men whose power of action upon things was insignificant in comparison with ours. For the amazing growth of our techniques, the adaptability and precision they have attained, the ideas and habits they are creating, make it a certainty that profound changes and are impending in the ancient craft of the beautiful. In the arts, there is a physical component which can no longer be considered or treated as it used to be, which cannot remain unaffected by our modern knowledge and power. For the last 20 years, neither matter nor space nor time has been what it was from time immemorial. We must expect great innovations to transform the entire technique of the arts, thereby affecting artistic invention itself, and perhaps even bringing about an amazing change in our very notion of art. Paul, Paul Valeri, Pieces Soul Art. Introduction. When Marx undertook his analysis of the capitalistic mode of production, the mode was in its infancy. Marx adopted an approach which gave his in investigations prognostic value. Going back to the basic conditions of, the cap of capitalist production, he presented them in a way which showed what could be expected of capitalism in the future. What could be expected it emerged was not only an increasingly harsh exploitation of the proletariat, but ultimately the creation of conditions which would make it impossible for capitalism to abolish itself. Since the transformation of the superstructure proceeds far more slowly than that of the base, it has taken more than half a century for the change in the conditions of production to be manifested in all areas of culture. How this process affected culture can only now be assessed, and these assessments mu must meet certain prognostic requirements. They do not, however, call for the, the call for theses on the art of the proletariat after its seizure of power, and still less for any on the art of the classless society. They call for these defini defining tendencies of the development of art under the present conditions of production. The dialectic of these conditions and production is evident in the superstructure, no less than in the economy. This is to find the developmental t tendencies of art can therefore contribute to the political struggle in ways that it would be a mistake to underestimate. They neutralize a number of traditional concepts, such as creativity and genius, eternal value and mystery which, used in a controlled way, and controlling them is difficult today, allow factual material to be manipulated in the interest of fascism. In what follows, the concepts which are introduced into the theory of art differ from those now current in that they are completely useless for the pur purposes of fascism. On the other hand, they are useful for the formulations of revolutionary demands on the, in the politics of art, Kunstpolitik.